so much, Eric. All right, we're off and running. To set the stage for our action focus water day today, we have been we are joined today by two women from the Bad River Nation and the Bad River Band of Lake Superior Chippewa. I have the pleasure this morning of introducing Dr. Patty Lowe for our plenary talk. But before that, we're gonna to start today off in a good way with an opening prayer from Edith Leoso. Edith is the Tribal Historic Preservation Officer for the Bad River Nation. She also serves her community in another role as a spiritual advisor. I am extremely thankful that Edith found the time to be with us this morning to share the gift of this opening message. Please help me welcome Edith Leoso. Miigwech, Patrick. Um, <clears throat> first of all, I want to say uh, that I'm very honored to be able to do this this morning. Can you hear me? Good. Okay, so um, uh, I've only done this a couple of times via virtual, and um, each time I smudge with uh, our sage and uh, to prepare myself. And, and sometimes I actually write the whole prayer out. But today I want to be able to just try and pull it out of me um, um, the way it comes through the spirit. So um, I also wanted to acknowledge that drawing behind me, <laughs> water is life, maybe a bit demodity. So I want to say when we know Buju and Dwe Magni Dug, Nigani Gabo we quite indigenous cards, guy mixin do dem, Nishkis bean onjba, guy nika fame dem and guy me de one quen dow. Um are we recording? Because I, I think that maybe we shouldn't record this, but uh I am happy else can to stop. Edith, that, was, that was beautiful. Thank you very much, Edith. And indeed, we will be singing the Nibi song later at, at 1.30 to 5 o'clock during an indigenous stream of water. So please join us and um, um, it will be good for all of us to sing that together. Um, now uh, on to the plenary talk. I'm excited to introduce Dr. Patty Lowe uh, with the Meddale School of Journalism at Northwestern University, where she is the co-director of uh, Northwestern Center for Native American and Indigenous Research. She is a very accomplished documentary uh, producer and former broadcast journalist in public and commercial television. A citizen of Mashka Zabizi, I'm sorry if I butchered that, Bad River Band of Lake Superior Chippewa. Patty is the author of several books, including The Native People of Wisconsin, a tome that is used by over 20,000 school children in, in, in Wisconsin. Today, Dr. Lowe will share a presentation with us entitled Water for the Seventh Generation a submersive approach to research, teaching, and outreach. Please help me give a warm welcome to Dr. Patty Lowe. Thank you so much, Patrick. And thank you so much, Jamie Gwich, to Edith Leoso, Ogimakwe of our Bad River Nation. Mashkazibi is how we pronounce it. It means medicine river. And um, we don't know how it wound up to be a bad river because it's certainly not bad to us. Um, and uh, thank you for the, the length of that introduction, Patrick, because, um, uh, you know, hearing, hearing my beloved friend's name just uh, got me kind of a little emotional. Um, you know, it's really been tough for communities like ours, small communities, when we lose speakers and medicine people and culture keepers and somebody like Joe was um, such a North Star for us and so integral. In fact, um, he, um, he's, uh, you'll see a little bit of him um, and, and his family is okay with that. Um, you'll see a little bit of him in one of the video excerpts that I'm gonna share with you. So um, my, uh, my presentation today, I'm gonna share my screen here. Um, is water for the seventh generation. And some of you may know that um, when we talk about seventh generation, uh, and I hope um, 
actually, I can't see my chat anymore. So Megan, if uh, if I start to break up, um, I'm probably you're going to probably have to unmute and just let me know verbally to give me a cue because I can't see my chat when I'm in full screen like this. No problem. Um, okay, good. So some of you may know about the seventh generation. It's a uh, it's a philosophy the Ojibwe and other and other Native people have um, that that tells us that when we make a decision today, we need to keep in mind um, seven generations into the future. So it really teaches us to um, be selfless, to make decisions not for our own benefit, but for the benefit of our great, 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 great grandchildren. And when you think about um, the really wicked environmental issues that we're facing today, climate change and, and um, you know, water, keeping our water safe, uh, you really need to have that long vision. So, um, and then a submersive approach to research, teaching and outreach, you get that? <laughs> We're talking about water. And um, so I wanted to share the way I approach what I do in Indian country and what I'm trying to do here um, at our Center for Native American and Indigenous Research, which is to combine research, teaching and outreach outreach in ways that matter. For the past um, couple of decades, I've been working in Indian country. Um, and I want to start with outreach, which kind of tells you what I think is most important. Um, normally, you know, a lot of academics start with research. Um, but for me, the reason I went back to school and got a PhD is so that I could do outreach in Native communities and try to make a difference. And what we've been trying to do on some of the reservations um, in northern Wisconsin, and most recently on my own reservation, Bad River, is to try to grow the next generation of storytellers and land stewards. So um, since 2007, uh, we've been teaching Native middle schoolers and high schoolers how to operate cameras, how to do interviews, how to interview their, their grandmas and their grandpas and their aunties and uncles and elders like Joe Rose. Um, and, and then interview native scientists from Great Lakes Indian Fish and Wildlife Commission and uh, tell stories using those two knowledge systems. Not that we're privileging one over the other, but um, understanding that both of them um, both knowledge systems are needed in order to keep us on the right path to the future. So um, this, this uh, uh, next excerpt here, well, this first excerpt here is um, from uh, a program about the Indigenous Arts and Sciences program, which is um, a, an effort by Earth Partnership, which helps science teachers in communities that in schools that serve native children um, how to incorporate traditional ecological knowledge into their science curricula so i'm going to play a little excerpt this one was um, something called potato bugs which was um, kids learning about macro invertebrates in the potato river which is one of the rivers that uh, flows through the, the bad river reservation so um, here we go with that. Um, collecting macroinvertebrates gives us good understanding of the quality of the water, and it's all about water quality. And relating that to our culture, uh, and for any culture, you need clean environments.
Now, what was really cool about that was um, the music that you heard was composed by a 14 year old boy. Uh, we try to teach as many media skills as we can to really try to get kids excited about storytelling. You know, storytelling is in, I mean, that's who we are as native people. And I've always thought that video and audio is very culturally consistent with who we are as native people. And so, um, you know, we teach kids how to do videography. We teach them how to um, do interviewing and video editing. And we use this ridiculously simple music digital music composition program that um, kids absolutely love. They can learn it in five minutes and create the kinds of soundtracks that you just heard there, uh, which is really exciting to see them get excited about. about um, you know, having another media skill in their in their pocket. Sometimes it's not just about um, teaching them media skills and, and like music composition. Sometimes it's about creating stories that really matter. And this next excerpt is from an eight minute documentary about the flood of a century that hit Bad River in 2016. Our community has, has seen a lot of weather events over the past few years that have been increasing in frequency and intensity. But this one, uh, which resulted in Bad River and Ashland County being declared a federal disaster area was devastating. It hit the night before our month long workshop began and we were totally cut off. Roads were flooded, Highway 2 was inundated, bridges were out in all directions and we were you know, really cut off. Uh, we were staying at the lodge, um, which had emergency power a couple of times each day. So we used those times to upload videos and interviews that the kids were shooting and their, their work appeared on Wisconsin Public Television, Wausau TV, Duluth television stations. It was, you know, pretty exciting for them. But what was really remarkable was that we shared our video with the emergency management people at um, at Bad River, and that was used as evidence in this federal disaster designation, which meant that hundreds of thousands of dollars came to the reservation in grants as opposed to loads. And um, one last note, the first shot you see is of our powwow grounds completely covered in water. That drum arbor, you know, is, is about eight feet tall, which shows you how much water we received. We had a storm start here Monday night, I believe it was, and that's when, uh, I'm not even sure how much water we, we received in the area, but there was enough water to have the Bad River rise beyond its record stages by, I believe, five feet. And by morning, we woke up to uh, multiple bridges were out, culverts and roads were washed away. Uh, we had water over bridges that were still there. We still, we had water over all of them. Uh, can you tell me what happened here today? Uh, we had a large uh, rainfall last night. It caused flash flooding. We had probably, I'd have to say at least two feet of water coming over the bridge over the evening hours it slowly wore away the road and the bridge collapsed there was two cars there was one there and the one in front where it got swept away down the stream and it, it and he was able to get out of the car and climb up the railing and, it, and there was a female travel elder trapped in the car he was able to rescue her out of the car and they were able to crawl across here he was telling her not to look down don't step in the water else you would get swept away down the stream and yeah, that was um, that was a oops, that was a um, a fourteen year old boy who um, suddenly became a reporter overnight, and it was really exciting to watch them. Even as devastating as it was, it was a really great opportunity for our kids to learn very quickly how to do storytelling. This next excerpt, another short one, um, features uh, the woman that started our um, our day today, Edith Leoso, talking about water um, in a documentary produced by three 14 year old uh, kids called um, Protect Our Future, which looked at uh, a proposed open pit taconite mine 
um, that was threatening our rice beds and our water quality a couple of years ago. And the documentary was screened at 37 film festivals and environmental conferences and won three national awards, including a, um, a human rights film festival award in Arizona. So um, I'm gonna play an excerpt from that. And again, all the music you hear, all the interviews, all the script, everything was done by um, three 14 year olds. In the way that our ancestors thought was to look at the bigger picture. Well, Patty, we're having some trouble uh, with the video. But not only was it the future, it was looking at the seven okay. generations ahead. All right. I'm going to. Um, I also wanted to tell you, um, you have about okay, five. I'm stop sharing my screen. <laughs> I also wanted to tell you, you have about five extra have minutes. What? You have a couple extra minutes. Uh, they're going to oh. push the next session back, so you have five minutes. Okay, that was last excerpt, and um, you know, I, uh, I, I don't really think I need to go to my slide. Should I um, stop my video? Am I unstable now? Uh, you're okay. It was just a little rough with the actual video sharing. So. Oh, okay. Yep. All right. We can hear you. Um, oh, okay. Well, maybe I'll go back to my screen then and, um, and not do any more video. How's that? I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm, uh, nope. No, okay. You know what? Who needs video? Who needs a PowerPoint presentation? I'll just talk um, and kind of wrap it up here. Um, one of the one of the things that I, I I talked about outreach, and I want to talk a little bit about teaching. One of the things that's really important to me is to um, provide my students experiential learning. So each fall, I take my undergraduate um, Native American environmental issues and media class to the Oneida Reservation, where um, my students spend a weekend picking, shucking, and braiding corn with the um, Oneida Nation's um, Oneida White Corn Cooperative. And they spend the weekend in a barn with elders um, and tribal members listening to stories. It's very tedious work, but beautiful work. Um, this is white corn that's really important to the Oneida people. And, um, and they come back with a real appreciation for how important food sovereignty is and food security systems. And the Oneida also have a seventh generation philosophy and, um, and a philosophy of, of providing enough food for seven years. Um, and they don't sell the corn. Um, they barter it and they share it with, in, in ceremonies and for funerals, powwows, that sort of thing. And it's, and it's interesting for my students to learn um, about what a gift economy looks like. Um, I take my graduate students on the road um, each, each spring. Um, last year, I, right before the pandemic hit, we visited a number of uh, communities in the Pacific Northwest and spent time with the Quinault and Quileute people who are preparing for an, a, a nine plus earthquake and tsunami and trying to move to higher ground. Their oral history tells them that these events happen every 350 years or so and that's, that time is happening. They're already dealing with surging seas because of climate change. So my students um, really got a very personal look at what um, climate change adaptation and mitigation looks like. Last year or two years ago, uh, they visited the Hopi and Navajo and Zuni communities and learned about the legacy of uranium mining and what that's done to the water. Um, and then of course, research. Um, I, am, um, I take a very collaborative approach uh, it looks like I'll be doing a third edition of our book, uh, Wisconsin Indian, um, Wisconsin, 
what is the name of my book? <laughs> Indian Nations of Wisconsin Histories of Endurance and Renewal. Um, and I, I try to approach my research collaboratively and work with culture keepers and tribal historians and um, educators in each community as we write this book together and then share the proceeds with the Wisconsin Indian Education Association. So that's kind of the way I, I try to do my part to heighten awareness about water in Wisconsin. And I think that digital storytelling is a really powerful way to, um, to, to grow the next generation of storytellers and land stewards in Indian country. So with this, I will say, Jamie Gwich, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Patty. And we'll make sure um, the videos we didn't get played get archived as part of this talk and uh, people can access them um, down the road. But thank you so much for um, sharing um, how you're creating the next uh, generations of storytellers and land stewards. Thank you so much for, for your work. With that, I think we'll move to our next morning session. Thank you everyone for a, a wonderful start to the day and um, please um, have a great day and uh, we'll start the next session in about two minutes. Thank you much.